Hey guys, this is Bluff Monkey back again for Sonic Academy and in today's set of tech tips we're going to take a look at sound design. So what I want to do is um, try and give you a few tips and tricks on how to get the best out of your sound design sessions with things that you may not have realised before. So let's get straight in. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is look at something fairly basic and straightforward, and that is the concept of envelopes. Now, I'm going to be using, for this video, I'm going to be using pigments simply because pigments has a pretty good visual feedback for the envelope settings. So you can see as I'm changing them down here, you can actually see the shape of the envelope changing on the user interface. Now, what we're going to be looking at in particular. Uh, two controls in particular, what all we're actually going to be using one is the curve knob. So if you look at the attack here on this particular envelope, envelope two, uh, the attack is linear, which means the time between the note on here and the loudest point of the note is a straight line. But what we can do is we can change that curve with this knob here. So instead of being linear, we can go exponential, which is this way, that's exponential. And if you do it the other way, so that it curves up like a hump, it's called, I think it's called logarithmic. But the actual amount of time between note on and maximum volume is the same, but it's how that um, volume change occurs. Does it occur quickly at first and then slow down or slowly at first and then speed up? So it's that kind of thing. And there are certain reasons why you would want these different curves. Now, the reason I'm using pigments um, over, say, Anna is, uh, let me just show you. So we, ha we have a curve control in Anna, but you don't know specifically, go away, specifically what um, the curve is doing. It's best to use your ears, obviously, but we don't know exactly whether it's on the attack or on the attack and the decay or on the release as well. Uh, sustain won't matter because that's just, well, usually that's just a straight line. It's not always, but it usually is. Um, so although we can control the curve in Anna 2, we don't know exactly what it's doing. So I just wanted to show you with a bit more visual feedback by using pigments. Let me just get rid of that channel. So I'm using the same project as I was using in my previous Tech Tips videos for the trance track. And all I've done is programmed in a fairly simple, let me just show you this, go away pigments, a fairly simple lead stroke up. It was not really arpeggiated, but it's a lead line, melodic lead line. It sounds rather crap as it is now, so we're going to tweak it a little bit. So what I want to do, <clears throat> let me just solo this channel. What I want to do is create the standard trance pluck. So let's give ourselves some unison with seven voices would be the classic. Too much. And I'm going to use, this is the update, by the way, pigments three. Uh, I'm going to use the Jupiter filter. And what we want to do is use envelope two, which is this one here, <clears throat> envelope two, to modulate our cutoff in the standard plucky way. So let's choose envelope two here. And it works fairly similar to the user interface in Serum, so you don't have to drag it. A little bit of click on the attack, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's also just as a little side note, sometimes if you're making really short staccato plucks, it's sometimes a, a good idea to just pull off on the attack and release a little bit, just in case you're not getting any clicks to uh, at the start of the end of the envelope. So I want something like that. But what I want to have a look at is this decay that we've got between uh, loudest point and full decay here. The time between here and here is going to remain the same, but we're going to change the decay curve 
And I want you to listen to how much that can affect the sound overall. Much pluckier. Remember, the time between this point and this point is still the same. The actual amount of time is the same, but it's how it's getting there that's changing. So at this point here, it sounds like the decay time is actually longer, but it's not. And this is something that you might find um, frustrating if you're new to sound design. Um, I remember back in the day when everybody was using Silent for trance, it didn't have, it didn't have these controls. But it later transpired, um, there was a guy called Urs Heckman who runs Yuhi. He was trying to do um, a silent type plugin called Hive. Um, and he couldn't quite figure out what was going on with the relationship between the envelope and the filter cutoff. Um, and it, it, all it was was the, um, the algorithms for the envelopes in silent were set up in a particular way that just happen to make plucky sounds quite good. So if you're trying to create a, pl a, a plucky sound, if you can control some of the uh, envelope curves, it's often better to use those than the actual ADSR themselves, those times themselves. Um, and it's we're going to talk about this a little bit more later, but it's about finding the sweet spot for the sound that you're trying to make. So one thing I would always do with pluck sounds is add a delay. Uh, I could use the one in pigments, but I'm going to go to sound toys. I am adoringly in love with Echo Boy Jr., which you may or may not remember. And then what you want to do is have a little play with the filter cutoff opening and closing, because this is something you're going to do in a track, uh, in, in any trance track, you're going to be opening and closing filter cutoffs and see what it sounds like along the entire spectrum of filter closed, filter open uh, with the track playing. You want to get the plucking time correct for your track. And then what, what I'll also listen for is the how the um, delay is reacting to the pluck times because obviously if you're using a delay, there's going to be a lot of repetition of what you're hearing. Uh, and if you're using a slightly longer decay time or a slightly fatter curve, uh, it might start to swamp the mix a little bit. So let's try that. Gonna need a bit of reverb as well. Let me just throw some reverb on it. Um, of course, I'm gonna use black hole. Why can't I change this? Uh, I actually want to EQ the reverb.
Yeah, I th I'm thinking about there. So I was just listening for a little while there. Uh, I, I will often try to balance out the what I'm hearing from the delay and the curve and the, the actual cutoff itself. Uh, but it can be quite useful to really pay attention to, to decay curves. And it's one of those things, as I said, when you're trying to recreate, the point I was trying to make was when you're trying to recreate a sound from another synth, if you can't see what the ADSR curves are actually doing, it can be difficult to match. It looks like your settings are identical. But if, you know, if we set up two identical envelopes here, um, like the attack, decay, sustain, release times, if they were all identical, but we just changed the actual curves a little bit, the envelopes would sound completely different. So when you're trying to recreate a sound from another synth, or if you're trying to listen to a track and recreate it, um, especially if it's plucky, then the actual the attack or decay curve can be one of the reasons why you're not quite there yet. So I hope you found this video useful and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video, then smash a like. And if you want to be notified about new videos, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace.